everyone. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us for part three. This is Clothed in His Righteousness, Tuesday, March 23rd, 2021. Amen. I hope you guys are really getting this by now. About It's all about the righteousness of Jesus that makes you holy. And the more that you understand that revelation, the more you start looking like him and acting like him, living like him and responding like him. Right. It's important to know, we've heard this before, wasn't going to teach on this, but I'll keep this brief. It's important to know that, that Jesus is, he was 100% God and 100% man. So everything that Jesus did on earth, he did it as a man in relationship with his father, mm -hmm. being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, I believe, if you want to look that up. It's important to get this because if, if you don't, you're always just going to think, well, that was Jesus. You know, Jesus did everything right and he was able to heal people and he never made a mistake. Oh, well, that's because he was God. Of course he wouldn't make a mistake. You have to understand that God put on flesh mm -hmm. and Jesus walked everything out as a human. Does that make sense? Absolutely, yes. A big concept to get. I'm going to read uh, 1 John chapter 4, starting at verse 16. This is out of the New Living Translation. We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in his love. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment, but we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. I read it out of this translation. The King James Version says, as he is, so are we in this world. But I really just love how it says, we live like Jesus here in this world. Mm -hmm. We are supposed to represent Christ to the world. We are. So important to get that. Well, isn't Christian little Christ? Yes. We are to be, we are to be walking this life out looking like Christ. We are to be modeling Christ. James chapter 3, starting at verse 13. Over top of it says, Heavenly versus demonic wisdom in this Bible that I'm reading from. This is the New King James Version. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that, he, that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. And here are two great commentaries on this. But before I go to that, I just want to ask people, are you, are you willing to yield? Are you willing to be corrected? If people, if you're on the wrong road and going down the wrong path, are you humble enough to let somebody step in and bring correction into your life? Think about, all of us can relate to this when we were children and our parents would tell us things that they felt was in our best interest. Mm -hmm. And when we were children or teenagers, we thought we knew better. Yeah. And we were like, they don't know what they're talking about. And then we would usually end up finding out the hard way. 
And then later on in life, you look back and you say, well, my parents really were right about that. Now listen, every parent, I'm not saying that each parent was right about every situation, but I can guarantee each and every one watching and myself and you, there was something that our parents have said to us or a parent or a guardian or somebody in authority right. that gave you advice at a younger age that you're thinking they have no idea what they are talking about. And as you got older, you realize that what they were saying was actually correct. It was for your own good. I hope this helps people today. I, I tell Jacob and I tell Gina that I really didn't, don't really feel like I became a man until I, I was like 40 years old when I became born again and gave my life to Christ is when I really began knowing my identity and know and know who I truly am in Christ. Mm -hmm. And the blessing is because just because it took me 40 years, it's not going to take Jacob 40 years to get it. He's going to get that way quicker than me. I can guarantee that. Mm -hmm. That was a really good point, babe. Thank you, babe. Almighty God's presence in our lives ought to make a noticeable and dramatic difference. If we continue to live self-centered, fearful, and defeated lives, we give compelling evidence that we continue to be spiritually dead. Yeah. Spiritual accountability. The more God gives to you, the greater your responsibility of stewardship. Mm -hmm. To yes. whom much is given, much is expected. Another translation would say, to whom much is given, much is required. Mm -hmm. If God has entrusted his spiritual truths or a leadership position to you, handle these carefully and reverently, for you will one day give an account for them. It is so important for people to understand that we are going to stand before Jesus one day. Each and every one of us will, it, it says every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that yeah. Jesus is Lord. And you could either do that willingly or unwillingly. But like, like we've been saying in these teachings, because it's really on our heart. We love people. We love you guys and we care about yeah. you. And when we give these teachings, we, we take it very serious because we're going to be held to a, a higher accountability. And if we don't tell you these things, like I said before, I don't want anyone uh, seeing me one day and then saying, why didn't you ever address these things with me? Absolutely. Yeah, when well, you're t when you're teaching, you are held to a greater accountability for sure. And then what I love in the sight yeah, of the Lord, I yeah. love what Todd White taught on. He said so he considers himself that he's hot, he's held to a higher accountability. Yeah. But then once the truth is given to you, then then it's put on you. Then it's like the responsibility is taken off of us. Right. We have given you the truth and the information, and then you are responsible. For what you could do. Nope. I can guarantee that anybody watching these teachings are, are not going to be able to look at us one day and say, well, you never told us about that. Just why didn't you ever address these issues? Right. If you are walking in sin and sin is real, you know, sin, we, you know, people just call it like missing the mark. And that that's the truth to that. But there's a much higher thing of what sin really is. And it's really a willful act of going against what God's standards is. And when you right. continue in that, and then your last verse is going to go to that point, sweetie. When you continue in a lifestyle of that, you are going to give an account to the Lord about your life. Absolutely. And you're not going to be able to say, well, I wasn't told about it or I didn't know any better about this because there's you know god loves people so much that he does put convic conviction in each and every one of our hearts and he also brings people along our path all through life mm -hmm. that constantly is going to just say things to you giving you truth giving you truth and then you still get to choose what you're doing i i hope that that conversation we had 
earlier, or I don't know if it was last night, but we were talking about people that condone things, and I'm trying to think of the word that she used. Enable. Enable. Thank Enable. you. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. P please, Enable. please teach on that a little bit. Well, before I wanna, you go to this. Well, I will, and, and quickly, I want to yeah. go to what you said, because Take you your said time. people say missing the mark. Um, missing the mark is different than living in a, a, a perpetual sin. That's good. I, in my, I mean, in, in my revelation of it, it's different. Missing the mark is you're really, um, you're really living, um, in relationship and right standing with the Lord. And you're really, you know, um, you're really living your purpose each day. And all of a sudden something happens from out of the blue and you're shocked by it and you miss it because you blow up. You, you, some, some kind of an encounter happens and you blow your temper. You missed it. You missed the mark, but you immediately get a conviction in your heart. You know, you were wrong for what you did. You apologize. You, you, um, you repent of it. And you apologize to the person and anybody that witnessed it. You repent to the Lord of it. You miss the mark. That is different than someone who is living in an everyday Good perpetual word. sin. And you know what you're doing and you're still doing it every day. That is a different thing than missing the mark. Mm -hmm. when, when we continue to enable someone who is living in a sin. So let's say you um, have a family member that is addicted to drugs and that person lives with you and you give them money for drugs, you or you, you give them money and you know what they're gonna use it for, but you don't ask any questions and you just keep giving them money on a daily basis, continuing to allow them to live in your home, cook for them, clean for them, and and do all these things for them, knowing they're doing the drugs, they know that you know they're doing the drugs, and you continue to allow it, you never confront it, and you never give an ultimatum of, you can continue to live here, and I can continue <clears throat> to help you in life, if you get off of these drugs and get into uh, some type of a program and get help, or if you're going to continue in this drug abuse, you're going to need to leave this house and because I can't have that. Either. No, I'm just yeah. using that as an example. It mm -hmm. could be anything. It could be any kind of a an addiction or a sin. Anything that you are enabling that person to do, you are continuing to support their behavior knowing what is going on <clears throat> and allowing it and just continuing to do it you are not helping that person you are not really helping them you think that you are but really and truly what you're doing is you're preventing yourself from having to face the confrontation with them very good and you're really keeping yourself in that safe zone of not having to separate yourself from this person and take the chance that maybe the person isn't going to talk to you for a while, or maybe the person's going to get very angry with you, or maybe they will leave. And then what happens? That's another possibility. Nobody's saying there's a 100% guarantee on things, but when you enable behavior, it what we can guarantee is when you enable it, it will continue. Yes, And it isn't going to stop because there is no reason for that person to change what is going on. Yeah, that word had to be put out there. So that's... Yeah, if you stay silent about it and you don't address it to people and you just enable it or condone it and not address it with the person, that, that that's being... That's enabling it. Yeah. Let me read First John... One nine, real quick, because this this makes things so simple. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All means all. Yeah. See, for true repentance, you have to confess that out of your mouth and turn from what you're doing. R repentance isn't doing something. 
and that is wrong or living in sin and just saying i'm sorry and but you continue uh yeah. living in that a true repentance is your turning away from it right. you know the bible says if anyone is in christ they are a new creation old things have passed away behold all things have become new that's right second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 you are a new creation in christ i'm going to read the short commentary it'll it'll explain what born again means to be born again is to receive the Holy Spirit through whom we gain perception to see what God sees. The Spirit reveals sin and righteousness so we can respond appropriately. That's really good. And I I, I was thinking about what, what you were saying. And again, I'm going back to Pastor Dave's sermon last Sunday, but he had some really, really good points. And I really liked when he said, when you are a born again believer, you should not have different selves. You should not have your Sunday self that you show the people at church, that the people at church know. But then there's a different self that you have when you go to work and you are acting and talking and behaving totally different That's than the good. Sunday self. And then there's another <clears> self <throat> that you have with your friends and that is a world of difference from the mm -hmm. Sunday self. That that should not be. There's one self, your Sunday self. The self that you're showing at church, the way you're talking and looking and acting and behaving there is the way that is how you should be every day all the time. That's who you should be. That's the self you should be. You shouldn't be changing depending on the atmosphere that you're in. Mm -hmm. That The atmosphere should not dictate your speech, your behavior, how you're uh, responding to things. That shouldn't dictate it. Jesus should be dictating the way you're, you're behaving. Holy Spirit living inside of you should be flowing out of you no matter if you're at church or if you're at work or you're hanging with your friends, mm -hmm. or you're at home with your family, that that same person should be the same person that's at the church on Sunday. It shouldn't be changing. So if it's changing, I think that's when you gotta say, you know, I maybe I need to examine myself and I need to examine how I'm living and and what what is really um what, what is really going on with me that I'm changing depending on the atmosphere that I'm in? Amen. That's yeah, important. Yes, it is important because Gene yeah. and I live a very transparent life. You know, we tell you guys everything. And, right, just a good way to examine that. If there's something going on in your life that you really don't want to tell people about or that you wouldn't want to share with your pastor, I would ask you, why don't you want to share that with your pastor? I mean, we okay. talk to papa dog about everything and yeah. anything we talk to pastor dave and pastor tracy about anything right yeah is yeah. there anything that you really would be embarrassed to talk about to your pastor whether it's something you're watching or something that you're doing in your life and if it's something you're doing and it is a willful sin and it doesn't even phase you anymore because a good friend of ours taught us that uh, and I, I just love what, what he said about that. We, we talk about this often, but it's the, the more that you sin, you, you continue to harden your heart. Yeah. And as your heart gets hardened, the things that used to bother you before no longer affect you anymore. Right. So something can start off very small, but just the more you continue in something, it's a progression where something that bothered you before no longer bothers you anymore and you don't even see anything wrong with it and you actually justify it. Right. That's a dangerous place to be in. It you is. have to understand that, you know, the Bible says the Holy Spirit can be grieved and the Holy Spirit can be quenched. So that means that there's things that you can, that you do that actually grieve the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We love Jesus. We love the Holy Spirit. We love Father God. We want to do what's pleasing to him. Yes. And what we, you know, we heard Francis Francis Chan. I always have trouble saying Francis. Francis Chan 
just he had a great sermon and he just opened it up he just said his a big concern was that he was afraid that there's people that are living a life and they really think everything's okay and they consider themselves a christian but they're going to go to hell and then there's other people that are so afraid they're going to go to hell but they're actually going to be in heaven yeah what life are you living today it matters tomorrow is not promised so if jesus came back right now what would or, he find you doing? Yeah. What would he find you doing? What would you be doing right now if Jesus came back? What would you be watching? What would you be doing? Rodney Howard Brown says this. I, I usually don't use this one, but it's just if you laid your head on your pillow tonight, and this was your last night on earth, do you have peace in your heart? I know that I do. Because of the finished work of Jesus. I'm not boasting on myself. I'm yeah. bragging on Jesus. Yeah. And I have right standing with him. Because what he did. And I put my faith in him. And it says blessed is the pure in heart. For they, for they shall see God. That's right. Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. Five, Matthew 5 verse 6 says. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled yeah fill yourself with his righteousness absolutely god loves you you, you are so loved and if we could just get that across to people how much the father loves you he doesn't want to see you in sin because he just knows that sin will eventually destroy you yeah which what a segue into yeah, your here's into my, your verse yeah this is the last <laughs> the last verse of the day so this is Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Mm -hmm. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And if you don't know what wages mean, you could also say for the consequences of yeah. sin is death. Is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yes, it is. Yeah. If you don't know him, today would be, if this if this message touched your heart, and not only if it yeah. did, because we don't want people just to be repeating things just because they feel like they have to. Right. If this message meant something to you and you were not born again, the best thing that you could do today on this Tuesday is just to say, Jesus, I repent of my sins. I'm, I'm going to turn from them. Yeah. I believe in my heart that you were raised from the dead. I confess with my mouth, Jesus, that you are Lord over my life. I ask you to come into my heart. I give you my life. I surrender it all to you. From this day forward, I'm going to live for you. Thank you that through the blood of Jesus, I have right standing. And I have full access to the Father through Jesus. Yeah. And from this day forward, I am going to live in right standing with you. And if you said this prayer, welcome to the family. And for people that are Christians, but you have turned away, mm -hmm. and you're just living like a lukewarm Christianity, today's, this, the, today's day. the best day just to tell the Father that you're, thank you that I'm back into the family right. again. Because the father never kicked you, kicked you out of the family. You removed yourself That's right. out of the family. He never kicked you out. That's right. He's always running for you and sending people your way to bring you back in. Absolutely. So don't wait another moment. Today's the day. Today's the day. Now's the day of salvation. Now's the acceptable time. We love you guys. We do. Receive Jesus. He, he loves you so much. And then clothe yourself in his righteousness. Put on your garment. Mm -hmm. Put on Christ. You are made whole and righteous. Right. You can actually live a life without any guilt, shame, or condemnation. I guarantee it. Right. Because as long as you focus on his righteousness, stop focusing on everything. Well, today I did good. 
and today I did bad. People like to put their mm. life on like, I'm just seeing like a, uh, what's the balance scale? What is that? Yeah, I'm just well, seeing the scale. scale. And they it's just balance, well, how many good things did I do? How many bad things That's did right. I do today? Throw the scale out. Get rid of the scale. <laughs> You know, that, that that's actually, that would be called, like, religion. That would just be li living a religious life. Absolutely. Okay, we are saved by grace through faith. That's right. It's all what Jesus has, has already done and accomplished and paid for. Receive him today. We love you guys. It's been a joy teaching this. We're looking forward to seeing you next week. And we'll see what the Lord gives us to uh, bring to you. We're, we're excited. I'm excited yeah. already. Love you guys. God bless you. God bless. And we'll see you soon.